Good afternoon. It's Wednesday the 15th of October. It's just on 12 o'clock. I've come over to uh, the river today, having a complete change, left all the carp gear behind. All I've got with me is a short 11 foot rod, centre pin reel, some floats, uh, some four pound line straight through. And I'm going to have a few hours um, afternoon chub and roach fishing. I've been dying to get over the river um, since last year, but I wasn't able to because I couldn't manage the banks. Uh, we've had a little bit of rain um, over recent weeks, as you know, but um, not enough to put a proper flow on it. But there's one or two swims here um, where I can still trundle a float down or free line a bait, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I've just got a bit of bread in my pocket net on my back and I'm going to start wandering downstream. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Right, very very simple stuff, just a size 10 hook, a couple of AA shot because this is a one shot, uh, one swan shot float and I'm going to trundle it through a few times. I've got the AA shot about 10-12 inches up and I'll trundle it through the swim a few times until I'm happy it's not catching bottom and then I'll put a bit of bait on and make a start. As you can see, it's a little bit of a jungle. What I always look for in these places is where you've got um, some water, fast water coming off of the shallows and then running into the deep water and you normally find that the chub and that tend to be lurking just down in the deeper water, just out of the faster flow the beauty of the centre pin is, is you can just ease the line off of it. Stop it, hold it back, let it run through. Once a couple of heavy rain falls to really come through now and wash some of these reeds and some of this weed away from here. Just keep mending the line, make sure that the line travels behind the float and in line with the float. Shallow that up a little bit more. That should be about right. Very shallow most of these swims here. I'd be surprised if we can find one that's more than about uh, two foot deep. That's better. Yes, that's just running through there, lovely now. As I said, just keep mending the line. 
by lifting the rod and getting the line back behind the float. Not quite enough flow here to pull it off the pin, but I can just just keep tapping it to get it going down there. Right, we'll try it with a bit of bait on. Just going to pull that down one inch. That's about right. There's a small roach just swimming down the other side now. What I do, I keep my slices of bread in um, individually wrapped in polythene bags and then that way the bread stays fresh rather than taking it out of a whole loaf. I just squeeze a bit around the shank of the hook leaving the point exposed throw that free offering in I actually had my personal best chub from here for a number of years um, although it's only a very very small stream it produced a chub to just over five pounds for me um, one October quite a number of years back uh, I've obviously surpassed that since because I've I've managed to get out to some larger rivers that have a, a much bigger head of chub in. If I was quiver tipping on here which I will do a little bit later on in the season when we've had a bit more rain and uh, we've got a bit more depth on it goes to about three feet at an average and quiver tipping often pays off I'll walk down each swim first and what I'll actually do is I'll bait up each swim I'll walk the length of it and then walk back and fish various swims but when I'm tending to float fish, I don't do that. I don't find it's particularly necessary. And quite often the first um, trundle down with the float is usually the, the one that produces the fish quite often. But it's like uh, any form of fishing, it's all about locating your fish first of all and using some watercraft. And uh, places like this are good to come to because Quite often the water's that shallow, you can actually see um, what the fish are doing. Uh, you know, when I've been over with my brothers, I've been able to come down and watch as they're trundling a float down or ledgering, and you can actually see what the fish are up to. And uh, it's amazing how ta many times the float goes past and uh, they ignore your bait and then um, suddenly one of them will pick it up for no reason but it's um, it gives you an idea of what then goes on when you're out carp fishing and that because the behavior is quite often very very similar Just rebate that hook one moment. I 
They're not the sort of places, as you can see, for bringing your tackle box and a load of other gear. There's no need for it. It is just literally, while it's like this, roving from swim to swim. If you don't, if you don't get anything from one swim after a few trots down, it's always advisable to move on. Try another swim, you can always come back to, to the area a bit later. I so said just keep mending that line so you get the float to go through where you want it to, get it to follow the path of the current. I always try to get mine to, rather than being the, the main flow, just running down the crease uh, between the current and the main flow. That's where I find quite often an awful lot of fish tend to hold. And you'll always find that there's one particular spot in the swim that the float tends to get to uh, which produces the bite. I didn't bring maggots with me today because I would have been pestered by smaller fish. Anyway. I'm going to try another swim a moment. I found a nice little trot through here. There's a, a nice belt of the faster water coming down. And I've got quite a nice run down here of um, probably about 15, 20 yards, which is good for a stretch of river like this. Uh, looks reasonably deepish, probably a couple of feet. So we'll get a bit of bread on and send this on its way. Just going to up the depth of the float a little bit to about a foot and a half and I think that will be about right I've been using a, a centre pin reel since I was about 18 um, fortunately my first centre pin reels weren't particularly good ones uh, I couldn't afford really decent free running centre pins but I used to use them for tench fishing and other stuff and uh, there we go, we've got a little bit of a nibble now something small there, just having a peck otherwise the floated would really be going right away, straight away, but could be the first fish of the day. As I was saying, I used to use them for um, close in tench fishing and They're really good, you get an awful lot of control with a centre pin reel, but on the river, providing you haven't got to cast too far across the river, they're absolutely superb and they're just ideal for places like this, where you've got um, fish that are trying to make dashes for freedom. 
at close quarters and it's amazing how over the past few years they sort of picked up in popularity I suppose um, that was thanks to people like John Wilson, um, Bob James, Chris Yates but uh, and and of course they really have picked up as regards being popular with people. Oh, there's a nibble straight away. I know I've uh, I've fished this river before. Um, on a number of occasions when it's got a bit more depth on it and I've uh, fished it with just maggots and uh, it's amazing the amount of small fish it does hold you know you can I know it doesn't sound a lot but you can amass six pound of fish from a swim like this quite easy uh, and considering the size of the fish that's that's quite a number of fish for six pound But as always, what you tend to get like now is you tend to get the, the smaller fish at the head of the swim. And then you tend to get the, the larger fish much, much further down. Try a much larger piece. It's just there's a little bit just about three quarters of the way over where if I can get the float into that part it just trundles down beautifully just over this side there's not quite enough enough flow to there's a, a raft further down and um, I'm pretty sure if I could trundle the float somewhere a little bit nearer there I might be in with a bit more of a chance Ah, uh, here we are, at last, and it's a good one as well. Yes. Oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right down where I said and uh, oh, the hook's plenty sharp it was a decent fish and all and I'm, I'm not just saying that I mean I've been having pecks and nibbles from small stuff that was actually a decent sized chub what I've, I've actually been waiting for and uh, no mistake in it a couple of little dots on the float and right away Never mind. Keep trying. <laughs> it's just plopped up down there. Right, let's try another another decent sized piece. Make sure that point isn't masked. Give it another go. Come on. Yeah, further down the swim where I thought I'd be, and it's it's been a little bit difficult just getting the the float to 
follow the bit of flow down that I wanted to where it takes me down to that part if you don't get it far enough across and uh, in that little bit of flow because it's only about two foot wide what's tending to happen is um, it's the current is bringing the float across to this side and it's just not not trotting down where I want it to as I said it just wants a little bit more a bit more rain on the the river a couple of days of of reasonably heavy rainfall would would probably do it that's a shame that was because you don't get an abundance of chances you know you're not you're not going to sit here and um, not in these conditions and catch fish after fish Although there's another little river just across from here that I used to fish called the River Itchin. It's not to be confused with the River Itchin for trout fishing. It's just it's it's probably not even as wide as this. And it used to be on the Coventry Ah, here we are. The Coventry Angling Club book. <laughs> this one isn't a big one. <laughs> Talk about from the oh. Well, there you go. <sighs> Hardly needed a net for that one, did we? But, there we go. It is a tiny little chub. So at least the, um, the river has got a good future. But it's the other one that I wanted. But anyway, I was saying um, about the little river itching across from here. And uh, it's not as wide as this. And as I said, um, it used to be on the Coventry Angling uh, Club book. Not sure Coventry Angling Club exists anymore. Um, but in the right conditions, uh, it was actually possible um, when you've got enough water on the river to perhaps catch um, 50 pound of chub and I'm talking about chub only two three pound in size you could actually catch about 50 pound of chub um, from it in the right conditions uh, trotting down with a stick float and that And um, the Angling Times actually did an article on it once for Coventry. They went there and I, th I think it was the article, if I remember rightly, was um, itching to get at those chub, is how it was titled. And it was a centre page feature in the uh, Angling Times. And uh, I had many a uh, really good season over there. Mainly, the majority of the time was spent um, quiver tipping and uh, you'd, you'd probably catch just a couple of chub in a session over there. Throw a couple of bits in. Let's go and have a look elsewhere. Well, he's certainly not shy, I'll say that for him. He's just been waddling all round the bank with me. Now he's come out into the field where I am. I've just tramped the bank down. 
and nettles are up as you can see about here just to get through to here uh, there's a little shallow over here that's just running into some deeper water I've, I've fished this swim before um, I've had some fish from here I don't think there's enough flow on here at the moment to uh, get the float to go down properly but we'll give it a shot and see what can be done put a good chunk on because I might only get one chance at this now I don't know where the end of the uh, bank is so I'm not going to go wander too far. Ah, nearly in the tree. Try again, a bit lower. I might just flick that under there into the flow. Try again. Well, it's trundling down. Might not be on the right depth than that yet. As I said, I'm not going too far, just in case. This swim certainly hasn't been fished for a good while, I can tell that. And then most people are probably a bit saner than me and wouldn't be bothering to do this sort of thing. Oh, there's a nibble. Small stuff again. I think I will have to come back with maggots. Have a bit of a bit of a go. Ah, I was a bit slow then. That's putting it mildly. Here we go. <laughs> Not a monster, but one nevertheless. a roach, decent roach. Oh, this is tricky. Well, when I say a decent roach, it's decent for this river. There are obviously some, oops, some bigger ones in here that we've yet to have today, but It is a fish nonetheless. Oh, there's a nibble. It's amazing what you do find in here though. There's, um, there's not just uh, roach, there's uh, and chub, there's dace, there's perch. Quite a number of uh, 
of, of species in here. No barbel. Uh, here we go. Uh, no barbel in here, obviously. <laughs> but uh, it's only, a, uh, once again, a small chub. Oh, don't go under those bushes. No, actually, it's another roach. I thought it was a chub just for a second. Oh, he's decided to fling himself off. But uh, they are absolutely pristine and perfect. Right. Well, that's it, I'm afraid. The heavy rain is just about lashing down now, or starting to. I've just lost uh, my float by hooking the other side. I've got other floats in my pocket, but um, I'm going to make a run for it because I can see it driving right across there, and in a moment, it's going to soak my camera. So, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all the best with your angling.